Hi everyone and welcome to the Elephant uh, in the Room. Uh, today I'm in conversation with Simon Consell. Uh, Simon is an independent researcher. Uh, he writes on conservation, climate change and human rights. Uh, uh, welcome Simon to the Elephant. Thank you. Uh, uh, Simon, uh, you, you recently co-authored a, a report with uh, Post-World International. Uh, the name of the report was Blood Carbon, How Carbon Offset Scheme uh, Makes Millions from Indigenous Land in Northern Kenya. Uh, for the sake of our viewers, uh, Simon, uh, what, what was the major thrust of, of, of the report? Well, we were looking at a very large scheme uh, being run by the Northern Rangelands Trust, uh, in northern Kenya, it covers about 2 million hectares. Right. So that's about 5% of the whole of Kenya, actually. Um, and covering the land of about 13 of the conservancies, which it has set up in uh, Isiolo, Laikipia, um, and further north as well, uh, in, the, in those areas, kind of uh, centered, I suppose, on the main road north to Masavit. And the general idea of this project, it claims, is that by changing the traditional grazing patterns of the many thousands of um, pastoralists living in that area, Samburu, uh, Borana, Rendili, and other peoples there, um, they can increase the amount of vegetation on the land. And by increasing the amount of vegetation, they claim they can store more carbon in the soils of those lands. And uh, by doing so, they can then create um, carbon credits, which they sell on the international markets to large companies. And we found that um, those include Facebook, um, Netflix, um, a big US, a big UK banks and so on, to supposedly offset their uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions. This project started already back in 2013. It's been running ever since. And we found a huge number of problems uh, with, this pro with this project. I mean, I've been looking at these kinds of carbon offset schemes for a number of years. And I don't think I've ever seen one where there are quite as many issues, let's say, um, problems with it as I did with this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Simon. I mean, I, I I just quickly I went to the report, but one one gets one one gets an impression of an image of I mean, almost like an elaborate scheme to to fleece off indigenous communities off their land. I mean, you you've mentioned that uh, uh, you know, you know, this is the 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 acreage of this of this scheme is almost one million one million acres, right? I mean, almost ten percent of Kenya's land, right? So one gets a sense that there's, there's much more nefarious activities going vis-a-vis uh, -vis this idea of carbon credit. My question would be, what exactly is this idea of carbon credit? Like, how does it actually work? Uh, how mm. do we, how, what, what, who are the stakeholders? How does one, how do they allocate, say, it's in Northern Kenya, Northern Kenya? What's the process that it led to? It was this particular area. Who are the people engaged here? And how the, the people who, because this, this, this is land was primarily indigenous land, was there any mm. level of engagement within the community to say that we're going to use your land uh, for this particular project? Mm. Uh, yes, well, lots of questions, all good, all good questions. Um, and yes, it's, it's certainly elaborate. Um, and this one is particularly complicated. Yeah, as I say, it, it, the, the idea is that more part because of the changes to the way that grazing is happening. And this basically means Northern Rangelands Trust, NRT, taking control of the, the herds, the, the, the cattle, the, the goats, sheep, camels and donkeys of the uh, people living in, the, in this area. And there's over 100,000 people uh, in, in this area who mostly subsist on, uh, on the grazing and the pastoralism. So NRT taking control of their normally kind of family controlled herds, kind of centralizing them moving them, you know, putting them in one area, moving them around a few days later or a couple of weeks later. And supposedly by doing that, um, allowing the vegetation, the grasses, and to some extent the bushes and the trees in this area to regrow. And all of that process supposedly then causes for more carbon to be sucked out of the atmosphere and stored 
in the in the soil. I mean, it's a I mean, this is a process that happens naturally, and it you know it it can, it can be done like this. By doing so, though, what uh, what they do is they create a kind of carbon surplus, if you like, not exactly a surplus, but there's a, there's an extra carbon being taken out of the atmosphere, and that that has a value um, in in the in the form of a kind of carbon credit, and one carbon credit means you know one ton of carbon dioxide removed from the atmosphere and stored either in the trees or in, in this case in in the soil under uh, underneath the conservancies there and you know the reason this has a value is that polluting companies and they're mostly in the, the rich world in the northern world are prepared to pay for those that kind of additional carbon storage because it supposedly offsets their own carbon emissions. So, you know, companies like oil companies or airline companies that create a lot of pollution, they're causing a lot of these greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, to be released into the atmosphere. They can then make these claims that, ah, we're becoming carbon neutral, not by stopping their own carbon pollution emissions, but by buying these offsets from somewhere, someone else, which they claim is actually kind of, in effect, storing the carbon, taking it out of the atmosphere for them. So it's already an, it's already an elaborate concept. And one of the difficulties about this is that you can't you can't see this carbon. <laughs> you can't see it in the atmosphere. It's always there. Uh, it's all it's very very difficult to see it actually being stored in the soil. You need very elaborate kind of equipment to 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 measure it and so on. And the carbon credits, these things that are being created, they they only exist essentially as kind of electronic records that you, that you can't even see them properly. There's no bits of paper that actually represent these carbon credits, but they still have a value. Now, what uh, the NRT has done is that they claim that they're creating at something like a million or three quarters of a million of these carbon credits every year by storing mm -hmm. more carbon in the soils of the, uh, these 13 conservancies. And well, we don't know exactly how much they've sold them for because they don't make this information available, but we know roughly what carbon credits are worth in the, in the international markets. And this could be earning somewhere between seven or 15, maybe even $20 million per year for NRT. So that's a lot of money basically. Uh, going going into the into the coffers. Well, not all of it is going to NRT, but a, you know a good proportion of it is. Some of this is supposed to be distributed out to the conservancies, where these kind of where this soil uh, a, a accumulation of carbon is supposedly going on. But what's actually happening is that most of the money is going to NRT itself and to a US marketing agency which is responsible for selling these carbon credits to big companies so the actual conservancies are getting you know just a very a few percentage basically of um of uh, each getting a few percentage of the uh, overall money that's coming from um coming from these carbon uh, credit sales and even that most of it they're having to go back to nrt to kind of beg to get to, to then spend the money they have to tell nrt how they want to spend the, how they want to spend the money nrt either approves that or it doesn't so it's it's actually less than one percent i think of of the of the total money is going straight to the conservancies and they can spend what what they like uh, spend it on what they like so this seems extremely extremely unfair and and you know but that, that's that's the financial that's the financial side of it in in a sense they kind of bigger concern is that the, the, this whole process of taking control of the grazing patterns there, I mean, it goes completely against what the grazers, the, the pastoralists, the, Sam, the Samburus and the Baranas have always done in this area. And they say, they say well, you know, well, what's, what's wrong with what we were doing anyway, <laughs> basically? We have, you know, we, 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 we've looked after this area, we've grazed it for hundreds, thousands of years, the, the, the environment is still there and you know the, the, the cattle is still there the wildlife is there so so what's what's new and what's different about this hmm. so there, then and there really are there are really serious questions about whether 
any real change has been brought about by uh, by what NRT has done. And if there hasn't been any real change, then why is it getting all this money for this if it's not actually changing the amount of carbon in, in the soil? Hmm. I mean, my question is that, I mean, the, the, the report says that NRT is, 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 is aware about this uh, Leiden method, right? I mean, they're talking about they even count the number of cattle, cattle and how much they graze and how much carbon they produce. In, hmm. in a, but one 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 gets a sense that uh, when you read through the, the details of how they are qualifying the project vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the 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 land and the money that they will get, one I mean the, the, the critics have said that uh, NRT is is actually purchasing land and that the end product of what they actually want is to purchase land and to maintain the conservancies as they are for their own uh, material gain. Uh, how to resist vis-a-vis -vis, uh, what they are they are aiming to do with uh, with the carbon credit project? Well, I mean, we don't we don't know that, and uh, that that's that's one of the problems um, because uh, you know a, a large amount of the money, and it's probably at least a third of the of the total receipts for this um, from the sale of these carbon credits, and that could amount to. Yeah, it's hard to know, but it could be three, four, five hundred million dollars over the next couple of decades. It's a lot of money, uh, you know. So, 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 what NRT does with this? Well, we 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 don't know, and they haven't really said, to be honest. So, but you know what they what they have been doing um, so far. Again, it's it's rather worrying. I mean, that uh, you know, fencing a lot of the of the areas off to essentially prevent. Um, you know incursions from from local people also to prevent cattle from being grazed in areas which they believe should be set aside for wildlife now i mean we know we've seen the terrible droughts that have been happening in in northern kenya but that with increasing uh, regularity but whenever the during the dry seasons uh, the herdsmen they they need to move their cattle around they follow the cattle where the rains are, that this is absolutely essential, and this has always been the way things are uh, are done there. You know, without that, the the cattle will die, and the people could die as well. So, but the the the, the model of uh, Northern Rangelands Trust is is about containing grazing. Mm -hmm. It's about keeping it in certain areas, and you know, specifically for this carbon project, all the cattle are supposed to stay inside the project area. Now that does that means they if that were rigorously enforced they couldn't be migrated south to around Mount Kenya for example when the when the rains fail so um, so it's extremely worrying so, and what you know what one fears and what the communities there have, have, have told us uh, many times over is that the, the, this this disruption of the the migration patterns and the the, the the routes that they move their animals along which can be you know very long hundreds of kilometers um because of the fencing uh, that's been established is very very problematic for them the second issue is that um there have been terrible human rights abuses uh, occurring um uh, at the hands of the NRT's uh, armed rangers. And, you know, both of these things could get worse. Uh, you know, more fences, more guns, more control over the grazing, more prevention of the necessary kind of migration of cattle backwards and forwards over long, uh, long distances. That could be the future here. And that, that I think, is why this, this project you know, with, without even looking at how valid the carbon credits are, the, the, the project could be extremely worrying, I think, in the long term. Mm. Away, away from, you know, the carbon credits, I mean, as we as conclude, mm. how, 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 how do we, how do we, what are some of the things we should start thinking about to resolve this impasse between NRT and uh, the community and, you know, the Kenyan government, you know, particularly around land, Partially grazing mm. land, partially grazing land, yeah, and, and the community. You know, the community needs. How do we resolve this impasse? Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I think this is very much for the for the communities themselves to mm. to say. Um, uh, I mean, the, the, it's interesting that there are presently some some cases. Uh, what is a legal case happening where 
uh, some communities in the Isiolo County are challenging the very legal basis on which um, one of the conservancies, at least, has been established. And, um, you know, that, that could have serious, and I think that case is coming back to court in May, that could have very serious implications, actually, because clearly if, if, the, if there wasn't a proper or properly followed legal basis for establishing the conservancies, then, well, what exactly is the basis? You know, the, whole, the whole model, I think, of these conservancies would have to be reconsidered, and that would certainly apply to the carbon project. I mean, I think there are already you know, very big questions about um, whether the, the carbon project has, has kind of followed all the, all, the, all the proper rules and laws. And if it hasn't, well, who should right, rightfully have the, the money? Uh, and, the, you know, and this is many millions of dollars already that has already been obtained by NRC from selling these carbon credits. So there are very big questions there. And I, and I, I think it has to come back to you know, the, 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 the kind of traditional leadership of those areas about the democratic elected processes that apply uh, in those areas and about you know, pr a proper kind of regulation of, of the active control and use of these lands through both the traditional and the, and the modern authorities rather than a kind of an, a completely unaccountable and untransparent internet kind of international <clears throat> sorry um, NGO that is now running this vast area of, of Kenya mm. I mean finally Simon before I let you go is is this a land grab I think I think fundamentally this is what Kenyans are <clears throat> asking is this a land grab it's it's been um, very carefully dressed up as being community driven um, the evidence that I have seen and that you know, many local people there, including some of the leading councils of elders, say is these kind of so-called um, community-led um, processes there, the boards of the conservancies and so on, they don't actually represent the people. Now, if that is the case, then really, yes, this is, this is a land grab on a, 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 by any other kind of description, essentially. Um, and... You know, it, it, it is over a very big area, and uh, I think, you know, one of the key purposes of this carbon project, because it is bringing in so much money, is that it strengthens that control of the land that NRT has already started to acquire. Thank you so much, Simon, for your time here at the Elephant. You're very, you're very welcome.